A lot of people are considering having a PRP injection, platelet-rich plasma injection in their knee. Does it work? Is it worth the expense? Because it's a lot out of pocket. This video will give you the information you need to make the right decision for you. If you have knee pain due to osteoarthritis, your choices are actually fairly limited. Most people start out with over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications like Tylenol, Aleve, Ibuprofen. Oftentimes, that's all it takes and the pain goes away. But when it doesn't, that's when most people turn to either their primary care medical doctor or a chiropractor for additional help. When it comes to the knee, chiropractors and physical therapists have fairly similar approaches. They begin by trying to identify imbalances of gait or station that can be corrected through exercises or temporarily relieved by modalities like cold laser, massage, and others. Most of the time, that's all the treatment that's necessary. But for those patients for whom things don't get better, they get worse, referral is then usually made to an orthopedic surgery specialist. The orthopedic surgeon generally examines your knee and takes an x-ray. X-rays show bones and joints. The degree of breakdown of the joint establishes the diagnosis of osteoarthritis when changes are present. While an x-ray does an excellent job of showing the bones, it does not directly reveal the underlying soft tissues. That's why most orthopedic surgeons will end up at that point sending you out for an MRI scan of the knee. MRI shows cartilage as well as the muscular soft tissues and fluid within the joint. That means on the MRI, your orthopedic surgeon can see the lining of the joint, the cartilage, as well as the meniscus. Hyaluronic acid injection to the knee has been shown to help temporarily relieve knee pain due to osteoarthritis. Increased viscosity in the joint after the injection is thought to be the mechanism. Common forms of hyaluronic acid used for injection in the knee are Synvisc, Orthovisc, Hyalgen, and Euflexa. New ones seem to be coming out every year. Most people report some relief after hyaluronic injection for around six months, and occasionally lucky patients have the effect last up to a year. However, the effect of hyaluronic acid injection in the knee is ultimately temporary and is expected to wear off sooner or later. Once the effect of the hyaluronic acid injection wears off, the next step in the traditional treatment of knee pain due to osteoarthritis is partial or total knee replacement. Partial and total knee replacement are excellent operations. Today we have robotic assistance to make them even better. However, age is a real factor. If you're under 55, the chances of ultimately needing to have the knee replacement revised are three times higher. That's unacceptable for many patients. So what if you just need to delay until you can get to age 55? What other treatments should we consider? Platelet-rich plasma is a component of your blood which can be isolated with a centrifuge and then injected into a joint like the knee to help heal the effects of osteoarthritis. Studies have confirmed what many patients have told us, that PRP injection reduces knee pain due to osteoarthritis. A meta-analysis is a combination of smaller trials that tries to get to the truth by looking at the combined information. And meta-analysis has shown, indeed, PRP has a real value in the treatment of knee pain due to osteoarthritis. However, these trials rely on patient reports of their pain, and there are two problems with studies of this type. The first is placebo. 
Look, it's not a negative thing. Let's say your cousin had a PRP injection and had a great response and her knee pain went away completely. Well, you have a bias then on hearing about it that PRP is a really effective treatment. So if you have a PRP injection, you may feel better even though you're not actually better. The other thing, the other factor, which is even larger, is that knee pain waxes and wanes, meaning sometimes it's worse and sometimes it's better. Well, what if you had a PRP injection and your knee just coincidentally got better that day? It would be hard to convince you that the pain didn't go away due to the injection, right? That's just human nature. But that makes it very hard for doctors to study this type of thing. But does it really work? The definitive trial just hasn't been done yet. Commercial insurance won't even cover it at all. PRP is a new intervention. In the Institute of Medicine analysis of successful interventions in medicine, they found that it takes an average of 17 years for a successful new concept to be adopted. Well, 17 years is a long time to wait when your knee hurts really badly. That's why I wanted to share the results with you of a recent study. If PRP injection into the knee is effective in the treatment of knee pain, then we would expect to see MRI changes in people's knees after PRP injection that we would associate with healing. That is the question or the topic that the authors of this study investigated. They did PRP injections or just exercise in 21 people and assigned them randomly. So 21 people had PRP plus exercise and 21 other randomly selected people had PRP alone, excuse me, had exercise alone. The top two images are MRI cuts through the knees. You can see the knee cap on the top and the leg bone on the bottom. The bright white squiggly line between them is the cartilage. Once the MRI is obtained, the computer can reconstruct the cartilage on several different sections. That's what's shown on the bottom. On the left is the cartilage before the PRP. You can see it's broken, irregular, looks painful, bone on bone. On the right is the same knee eight months after the injection of PRP with the computer reconstruction. Now the cartilage is one long sheet. It looks like it's healed. It's thicker, it's continuous, it doesn't look painful. Computer analysis revealed overall significantly improved reconstructed images of the cartilage eight months after PRP. But did anybody feel better? At the end of the day, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And in table two of this study, we see that the people who had PRP reported less pain, stiffness, and improved functional capacity eight months after the injection as well. To give you an example, for the PRP group, the measurement of the pain was 3.85, whereas the control was 4.04. It is a statistically significant difference, and it's better, but it's also important to note the pain didn't go away. It went down, but it was still certainly present. Well then, why do the hyaluronic acid at all? In the algorithm we reviewed, they're kind of doing the same thing, injection for temporary relief of the knee pain. We need to check the literature for more information. Well, a meta-analysis comparing hyaluronic acid injection to PRP injection for the treatment of knee pain showed clearly that PRP was superior. Well, that's certainly welcome news for people suffering from knee pain. But if PRP is superior, should you have a hyaluronic acid injection in the first place? Well, there's several reasons why you would still want to have, consider having a hyaluronic acid injection. 
First of all, it's covered by your insurance. Cost is always an issue, and cost certainly, the cost of PRP injection may be prohibitive. Second, it's not a big deal, but it is something. You don't have to have your blood drawn as you do in PRP. And last, for patients who are really committed to the regenerative route and want to undergo uh, growth factor treatment that or stem cell treatment, that involves putting a big needle in the hip. And certainly a hyaluronic acid injection doesn't require any aspiration of the hip. Based on all the information we've reviewed, if you have severe knee pain due to osteoarthritis and you're really not ready for a total or a partial knee replacement, these data would indicate strongly you should consider having a PRP injection in your knee. I would have it done myself and I would certainly recommend it to you. Now there's a lot of other data that indicates that we didn't cover out there that indicates it's actually the growth factors in the PRP which cause the beneficial effect on the knee. We also know that the growth factors we make reduce with age. So if you're over 50, it's probably a good idea to sort of spike up your PRP by adding growth factors which come from Amnion. Now that is an additional cost, but it's really not an additional risk, so I would strongly recommend it. Unless you just really want to go all the way with the growth factor approach and get the best growth factors available from your body, and that would be skip the PRP and go directly to a bone marrow aspirate, let them spin down the bone marrow and inject it for the actual definitive treatment. How many PRP injections are necessary? Well, I don't know for sure, but I think this question comes from someone who's had epidural injections and the doctor told them, hey, you don't need one, you need three. This is a very different situation. The idea of that epidural injection is just to reduce inflammation. The idea of the PRP injection is for the growth factors and other healing proteins in the PRP to cause your body to heal. So we don't want to keep repeating the PRP injections. That's, you know, that's just like eating. You had a great dinner. You don't need to have two more great dinners right after that. You may need one down the line, but immediately one and done. That's one of the nice things about PRP. How long does a PRP injection in the knee actually last? We don't know. The studies reviewed show variable information. The one we just saw that came out just this year in January of 2020 showed that eight months after a single PRP injection, MRI demonstrates really substantial healing going on inside the cartilage of the knee. Does that mean that the growth factors lasted eight months? There's no way. Proteins injected into the body probably don't last more than a few days, but the changes that are happening seem to be going on for months and months. We don't know for sure. My recommendation, if you get a year out, so if you had a great injection and everything was terrific and then the pain slowly came back and you're between six months and a year, have another one. If it doesn't put you over the top after that, you need to consider total knee replacement. How much does one of these PRP injections in the knee actually cost? That's a great question because since the definitive study hasn't been done yet, commercial health insurance isn't paying for this, you are. If you're getting a PRP injection in the knee for your knee pain from osteoarthritis, it's, because it's gonna go against your credit card. So you wanna make darn well sure you get the most for your money. A typical PRP injection, whether it's for the face or the elbow or the shoulder or the knee, is generally around $1,000. You might be able to find it for $900, you might be able to find it for $1,200, but it's, it's generally right around $1,000. If you're 50 or over and you want to spike your PRP with an amnion growth factor, that growth factor, as you might imagine, is expensive, and that generally adds another $1,000 to the injection price. So a PRP plus growth factor injection is usually around $2,000. If you want to go, you know, go the Cadillac, go whole hog all the way and get the best growth factor treatment available for most people, that's the bone marrow aspirate from the pelvis. Now that involves anesthesia as well as a special spin down 
as well as the injection, and so that's usually more. That generally, those injections with the BM, with that usually go for $3,000. I hope that helps.